What a mess. In today's video, we're gonna talk about an update to a ongoing issue that we have covered on our channel. If you haven't seen some of the videos I've been doing on 454B refrigerant, the mess that this has all created and where you, if you're a homeowner or customer out there trying to just get your heating and air system replaced or installed, some of the things you need to know about this whole thing. And I wanna not just talk about the problem itself as we have done in other videos, but I wanna talk more specifically as we go through this video, if you stick around on some of the situations we are seeing you as a customer be put in the way many contractors are handling some of these situations. And in my mind, some of these situations very poorly. And I want to cover that, what you can do about it and what you need to know about it. So let's back up just a little bit as we go through this and talk about where we are just really quick, especially if you haven't seen any of my videos. Where we're at during the recording of this video is we're in the middle of this phase out of 410A refrigerant, and we've moved into this new era of what many call A2L refrigerants. And so Yes, they're mildly flammable. Yes, they're supposedly better for the environment and a lot of different things as far as that goes. But what you need to know as a customer, as someone that might be buying one of these heating and air systems is some of the brands are going one way with R32 refrigerant and a lot of the brands have gone with 454B refrigerant. And the problem that we are seeing is a shortage. A lot of fingers being pointed. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's because of this reason or that reason. But the one thing that cannot be denied is there are technicians, there are HVAC companies that are trying to order, just simply order a jug of refrigerant and they're being told, no, you're not gonna be able to order one. We don't have any in stock and we won't have any of it anytime soon. Now, what that timeline looks like, I've heard all kinds of things throwing around. Hopefully this gets fixed at some point, but we're in the middle of summer. So in some cases you have a problem on your hands if you don't have the refrigerant that you need, okay? And again, we've covered that in other videos. I'll put links to some of those videos down below in the description so you can watch those after you watch this one so you can get a better idea, a bigger picture of this big problem and who I think should be blamed in all of this. Here's some things you need to know. Number one, there are some brands, there are some manufacturers who have come out now and said, hey, to alleviate this problem, we're gonna add a little more refrigerant to the equipment. We're gonna add refrigerant to that system so that way it's pre-charged in the equipment itself to handle longer stretches of line sets, more applications and so on, right? And I will say, I'll give credit where credit is due. Thank goodness they're trying to do something here. Some of the brands are charging a little more money for that. Some of the brands are saying, we're gonna eat this extra added surcharge of costs and we're gonna just still sell the equipment at the price that we've quoted, but we're gonna now charge those systems a little higher. And if you weren't aware, most equipment today, not all, but most equipment will come pre-charged with a certain amount of distance on the line sets. Meaning if you have an outdoor unit and an indoor unit, the outdoor unit will come pre-charged for say up to 15 or 25 feet of line sets. I already gave credit where credit was due, but the one thing I wanna say is these guys wanna pat on the back. Oh, look at us. We're a brand that's now pre-charging our systems for, with more refrigerant. The one thing I'll say is why weren't you doing that to start with? You're acting like you're giving someone a cookie here. Why don't you just charge your system accordingly from the get-go. So these installation companies don't have to put this equipment in. I'm not saying you need to pre-charge the system for 50 feet, but some of these guys are just barely putting any refrigerant in them. And a lot of technicians will install the equipment and then have to add a significant amount of refrigerant to that system to get it charged up to the levels that it needs to be to operate the way it's supposed to. If you're a homeowner, if you didn't know, there is a such thing as not just a system that doesn't have enough refrigerant under charged, but then there is a such thing as a system that's overcharged, okay? I don't think we should give too much credit to these manufacturers and say, oh, you've solved this huge problem because now you're finally doing your job. You're finally now charging these systems the way they are supposed to. And I'll just say this, this is my opinion, my opinion alone. No one's paid me to talk about this stuff and it's an opinion, it's not facts. You don't have to sue me. I'm just giving my opinion. I just want to throw that out there as a disclaimer. A lot of folks don't want the truth out there. And, and some of them have even tried to come for my job already. They've come to people in my company and, and tried to come after me in some way, smack my 
my hand in some way for giving folks the truth. But that's neither here nor there. If you're a customer that now has a 454B system, we would all hope that a new system should not need refrigerant. But let's just say for some reason you do. Let's talk about how some of the contractors are handling these situations. Some of the things that I'm being told, again, I don't have any facts to back any of this stuff up. This is not statistics. It's me out here in the field being told by others in the trade how these situations are being handled. And the first thing is a lot of contractors are installing more 410A equipment than they would have, right? So a lot of contractors a year ago said 410A is going away anyway. It's being phased out or at least phased down. We're going to go ahead and switch to these new refrigerants as much as we can. We're going to start bringing in this equipment. And we now see some of those contractors that originally were fine with making the switch now saying, Let's pump the brakes here. And we still have a little window of time here where we can continue to put 410A equipment in and they're going that route. So that's one thing you should be aware of. A refrigerant that we know is going away that will be phased down is now still being installed because contractors are going with that option. The second thing we're seeing contractors do is they're stockpiling this stuff. So when this all first came out, we heard that there was gonna be some sort of a shortage, maybe some lag, some back orders on this stuff. A lot of, especially large contractors, almost out of panic, went out and bought a whole bunch of this stuff, pallets and pallets of it. Some of them have commented on my videos and said, yeah, I work at a company where we're, we're good. We, our customers are gonna be taken care of. And we bought a whole bunch of this stuff. And it almost kind of made the problem worse, right? What little bit we had was taken, good or bad. I'm not saying that that was a bad Bad move on their part. I'm just trying to give what I've been hearing to you. Number three, and this is a big one. This is one that is a huge deal, a big problem. You as a customer might even want to be standing there when the contractor installs your system because of this one. And that is a lot of contractors are adding refrigerants to that system that don't belong in that system. So they're installing a 454B system and they're adding a refrigerant that's not 454B in it to get it to work. Now, does it work? Yes. In some cases, we're hearing guys say, oh yeah, I added this refrigerant to it and it worked just fine. But what they don't know is what have they now done to that system? Did they add R32 to it where it has higher discharge temperatures and that system's not designed for those temperatures and now that customer is going to have a premature failure years later and that contractor doesn't care. They made their money. They made a quick buck off of the installation of that system and they've moved on now the customer can't get a hold of them and they're screwed because of all this. Or maybe they're adding another refrigerant other than R32, perhaps 410A to that system. And that also has not been tested. It's not EPA approved. It's not really approved by anyone. And you're now adding a blend of refrigerants, basically a, a chemistry test here that, oh, by the way, yes, maybe it works, but now you don't know what your subcool should be because you got all these different refrigerants added in there. And oh, by the way, if you're adding 410A to a system like that, you're adding a refrigerant with a high GWP that we're supposed to be phasing down because it's horrible for the environment to this now supposedly environmentally friendly refrigerant system. At the end of the day, the point here is if you have a system that is supposed to have X, Y, and Z refrigerant in it, they should not be adding ZYX refrigerant to it. It should be what belongs in that system should be added to that system. Number four, we're seeing some companies, I have personally experienced this dealing with different folks in our industry, and that is some contractors that have always hung their hat on a certain brand because that brand is now selling 454B refrigerant systems, they're abandoning ship. A brand, a company that they've been affiliated with for decades, some of them are literally kicking them to the curb and saying, you've made a poor decision here going with the wrong refrigerant and they're now going with say, companies that sell R32 refrigerant. I have personally experienced that and been front row seat to companies making that switch. Is that a permanent switch? Who knows? But for some of them, it might be. They are saying, hey, you made a bad decision here. I'm tired of dealing with folks that make these horrible refrigerants, and we're now gonna go with a company that seems to make better decisions here. Next, some of you have even said this in our live show, 
we have heard rumblings of some contractors trying to recreate this refrigerant. They're taking R32 because 454B does have R32 in it. It's not a pure form of it. It's a blend of R32 plus a refrigerant called 1234YF. And they're taking the two refrigerants and trying to, again, like a chemistry project, add the two refrigerants to a 454B system. I think of all the situations we've heard, that one, if you can figure out how to do it and do it safely and do it right, making sure that the makeup of the system is the blend that it should be, meaning 454B should be just under 70% R32 and just over 30% 1234YF, and that's what makes up that blend. And if you know how to do that and you can do it safely and do it the right way, so that way the customer is getting exactly what they're paying for, I mean, that seems to be like the best viable option I've heard so far. I just am nervous with that because how do you know your percentages are dead on if you're not doing this in a manufacturing controlled lab tested environment on how to properly add these refrigerants and make that blend together. It may not be that hard. I don't know. I'm not a chemist, but it is interesting how we have heard, especially folks. I, I literally did a live show a couple of weeks ago and guys were saying, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Another thing we're seeing some of the manufacturers do is they're now offering options that they didn't have before. And so they're offering products where they can retrofit. So let's say you've got a furnace that you're not going to replace and you're now going to put in a A2L refrigerant indoor coil with an outdoor unit, they're offering products that allow for that sensor that's now going to be in those new A2L systems, something to plug into. That sensor is going to plug into that board and then it's going to have all the wiring to where it now makes that furnace that was never designed to work with that refrigerant now go into mitigation mode like it's supposed to to meet code. And we're seeing products like that. We're seeing other products that will allow the system to meet code by opening zone dampers and turning off IAQ accessories, all the things that it's supposed to do to meet code. We're seeing some of those solutions be introduced to the market. Another thing that I think is interesting is we're also hearing of contractors that are just simply going with the flow and now paying these really high prices and pushing those costs off to the customer. So in other words, they may be able to get their hands on a jug of 454B refrigerant, but pay a multiplier significantly higher than what it would have gone for a year ago. A jug of refrigerant that literally a year ago was 400 bucks. Now they're paying 1200, 1500, in some cases, two or $3,000 for a jug of this stuff to get their customer going. That's interesting to me because somebody's got to pay that bill. And then finally, we are seeing more and more folks, some of you have commented on our videos, where if they're not gonna switch to an R32 refrigerant system and they're not comfortable with some of these other things we've just now talked about, that they are simply making Band-Aid repairs on systems and maybe paying more than they would have liked to, where most folks use that as their, their multiplier. We've talked about some of our other videos. If you look up my video called Replace or Repair the 5K Rule, they'll just simply do the math. They'll say, do I wanna put this amount of money in a system system that is now X amount of years old, or do I want to just put in a brand new system? And we're seeing more folks go with the first option and maybe spend a lot of money on a repair on a very old system when in the past they may have opted to just go ahead and replace that system and not have the headaches. Very interesting. In fact, I just think it's interesting so far that it just seems to be a handful of us, guys like me and a few others that are seem to be sounding off on this. A lot of the folks selling this stuff, they don't care. A lot of the manufacturers don't seem to care. There's been nobody that have put videos out that say, sorry. None of these guys have put out a video saying, some things happen here. Here's some transparency. Here's what's going on behind the scenes. We wanna to apologize to our consumers. I have not seen any, maybe you guys have seen that and you can share that with me. It's absolutely crazy to me that we have not seen that. We haven't seen any of these big brands come out and say, we messed up here and we're really sorry about this shortage. None of them seem to care. They're just rolling with the punches. There's this gigantic mess of this shortage of this refrigerant and people are doing these chemistry experiments of doing all kinds of crazy things that we keep hearing about to get by and nobody seems to be outraged by this. It's absolutely crazy to me 
that there hasn't been a class action lawsuit, that there isn't the FTC getting involved. Why, why they haven't even looked at this is crazy to me. And it's probably because nobody seems to be sounding the alarm on this. And at the end of the day, we phased down a refrigerant that we've worked with for the last two decades that was working. We could have done a slower transition to a much better refrigerant possibly, or at least done it in a way where if one thing was falling short, we still had other options. And instead they flipped the switch on us and we have all these problems and folks are suffering because of it. And they may not even know they're suffering. They may not know that contractor did something to their system just to get them going and they're gonna pay for it literally in the future. Let me know your thoughts. Obviously I'm a little fired up. I don't get that fired up on this channel as often as I used to about certain problems in our industry, but this one more than anything else is odd to me that more folks aren't screaming, more folks aren't doing blog posts and the news hasn't gotten in touch. Why is not ABC News or 60 Minutes not even looked into this is crazy to me. That said, if you are mad or not, comment down below. I'd love to hear your take on this. I do my best to read all those comments, although admittedly, it, sometimes I just don't get to everything and I'm sorry if I don't respond to your comment, but we all have a different take on this. Comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about some of the upgrades in the industry that might be a waste of your money. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.